I swear to God, every time I try to go to record one of these videos, like something messes up either the microphone, the camera, I don't know what's happening anymore and we're just gonna wing this as per usual. So last night I just finished streaming the end of Spider-Man Remastered, specifically the DLC. And I waited to do a video on this topic because I wanted to finish the DLC first before giving my full thoughts and conclusions roughly 50 hours into the game and still have plenty of achievements left to do, plenty of exploring and all that good stuff. But I've played 47 hours of Spider-Man Remastered and here are my thoughts. Welcome back to another Grey's Gaming Diary. I am your host, Aaron Gray, with a very cute trickster plush over here in the corner. Shout out to my coworker who very kindly made this for me. She did not make the pattern though. I got the pattern off of Etsy so you could still make it yourself. I am just not that good at crocheting. But like I mentioned just a moment ago, last night I finished the entirety of Spider-Man Remastered on the PC and I had so much fun with this game. Originally we had a vote between playing either God of War for the PC or Spider-Man Remastered and I was kind of hoping Spider-Man Remastered would win that vote but my community voted for God of War and as per with most PC ports, we had issues with it. Hooray. So we ended up swapping away from God of War. I do plan on going back to God of War at some point, probably after we finish Mass Effect and Elden Ring, because someone in my community graciously gifted me Elden Ring. So now I am legally obligated to play Elden Ring. But we had pivoted and changed courses to play Spider-Man Remastered. And I'm kind of glad we did. I had initially got into the idea of playing Spider-Man, generally speaking, because of course, as per usual, Brian and Amelia Decker convinced me to be interested in this franchise. So they were playing Spider-Man 2, and after I had initially started playing the remastered version of Spider-Man 1, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna watch any more Spider-Man 2 just in case if I do go down this path of wanting to play Spider-Man 2, which is not yet out on PC, so that will come much later down the line, but I did not wanna get spoiled regardless. And I do have to say, this game, if you're a video game company, please pay attention to how they did this PC port because it was beautifully done. The only issue I ended up having with the PC port was my OBS only had issues when Peter was swinging through the city. Every other part, the fights, the cutscenes, the just sitting around and chatting and not doing anything and listening to phone calls, it was completely fine, no issues. I, was, I think I still played on lower graphics settings just to be on the safe side. If there was any issue, technically, it was because of OBS and not the game itself. So Insomniac, you get a big thumbs up, A plus remarks from me. You can certify that, you can put it on your box if you want because I've played some horrible PC ports in my time being on Twitch and just a gamer, generally speaking. And I am happy to say that this is one of the best PC ports I've played. Even Alan Wake 2 struggled when I was streaming and even off stream it struggles to this day still. So I'm just happy to see that I'm actually able to play a game fully and not have many, if at all, any issues getting it to run on my PC. And if that's not enough to convince you, let me tell you about the other things. So this game is very much an open world action adventure as you would probably expect from anything superhero related. TLDR, I'm not really that much into superheroes. If anything, I'm more of a DC fan than I am of a Marvel fan. But even then, I still don't know much about the DC universe. I just grew up more with DC than I did with Marvel. But even then, even though I know jack shit about Peter Parker's story, about the villains, about the conflict, about how Miles got his powers, how Peter gets his powers. I was still able to enjoy the story and just have fun with the game. The combat is really fun and engaging. Same with just general gameplay aspects of just swinging through the city. I thought I was gonna have a huge issue with just maneuvering around the city using these mechanics, but 
It is a bit of a, a rough start. It is always a learning curve whenever you're picking up a new game. I grew to really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun learning how to do new tricks, how to get different speed and momentum as you're flinging through the city. And just the combat is also really, really fun. So you have like your base combat of just like doing melees and then you can start integrating your spidey powers into it with your different gadgets and whatnot. But even then you don't have to use the gadgets if you don't want to. The game will prompt you in certain moments when you you do need to use a gadget like your regular web shooters or if you need to use like an electro blast or whatever but it will prompt you but you are not expected to get through every single fight in the game using those different mechanics which is actually really really nice so you as the player get to take ownership in how you get to play the game which i think is a lot of fun as a player and also within the game plot wise itself there's different types of missions so like you'll have a mission where you're sleuthing around as spider-man you'll have a mission where there's very it's very combat heavy you'll have a mission where you have to chase something down or locate something and then you have the missions where the pov shifts so like you get to play as mj for a couple of missions or maybe as miles and it provides that different tonal shift and you get that different perspective and also it takes away your spider powers so you don't get to rely on them you may have like other mechanics like Miles has his little drone and his little pad that he can like hacky hack his way like Aiden Pierce. He can hack his way into something to make you give you access to something. It changes things up a little bit and doesn't make it as monotonous. And I, that's something I really, really appreciate in this game. And speaking of the plot, overall speaking, like I mentioned before, you don't have to be a fan of Spider-Man in order to enjoy this game. Like I've kind of touched on before, I have very little knowledge on superhero stuff, especially when it comes to the topic at hand of Spider-Man. For me to come in, I didn't feel like I was really missing anything. I know from what people have said in my chat while I was streaming it, that there's definitely Easter eggs for those who may be more familiar with the Spider-Man lore and the universe and with the greater world of the MCU, but for me, it, I didn't feel ostracized in a way. I didn't feel out of the loop. It just like, if you notice it, great. If not, then oh well, who cares? And I'm really glad that they still gave nods to those who may understand those little Easter eggs, but if you don't understand them, you're not missing anything. But to go along with the overall story, it's very easy to digest. There is some big twists that you may or may not be expecting, depending on how much knowledge you may have. Like I, spoiler warning, I fully expected Dr. Octavius to turn into a supervillain is not expecting the whole tentacle leg situation because I, I didn't remember what Dr. Octavius looked like, but I was pretty sure from the beginning when we were introduced to, to Otto that I'm like, oh, I think this guy is a villain in this universe. I don't remember, but I think he is. So I kind of already had an inkling that he was going to turn into a bad guy. But again, like I didn't really fully understand. So it still came as a little bit of a surprise when that did happen. But yeah, the plot is really, really enjoyable. I still, to not give full spoilers on the ending itself, but it still tugged at my heartstrings. It makes me really excited to continue playing with Miles Morales and eventually Spider-Man 2 once that comes to PC. But like I mentioned before, it's really easy to digest. So you don't have to necessarily be a Spider-Man fan or a superhero fan, MCU fan or whatever, in order to enjoy this game. If you just like a plain old good action adventure open world game, then this game is definitely gonna be something up your alley. Unless if you just hate superhero stuff, which is also completely valid because I know people who just won't touch anything superhero related and you know what that's still a vibe and something else i really appreciated about the world is that it felt alive and i remember when i was doing research for my watchdogs retrospective video that people when the game initially came out in 2014 for watchdogs people were commenting that it, it felt alive, it felt lived in. And that's the kind of vibe I got with Spider-Man. Whether it be you're flinging around the city and there's different rooms in the skyscraper lit up at certain times of the day. And you can even go up to those windows and like, granted, you, you'll notice that it's like copy pasted like interior structures, but it still like adds like a level of like, oh, there's someone living here. There's someone who lives behind it. It's not just like a blank window that just like looks like it's got light, but like the shades are drawn. Like they actually let you here into maybe someone's life, even though there's not really anything happening in there, but it still lets you have that moment of there's someone lives here. There's things happening in the city 
and how the people will interact with you as you swing through. If you perch somewhere nearby that's pretty close to the ground, people will take notice of you and be like, oh my God, I got a picture of Spider-Man. Like, oh my God, Spider-Man over here. And it's like so cool, like how people interact with Spider-Man and like, you get to interact with them too, especially like if you stopped a criminal activity if you stop some crim in the city people may come up to you and like you you actually get an achievement for interacting with people like casually speaking and that's really really cool how like they've built in this mechanism where you get to interact with the citizens of new york city as spider-man and that's just so cool it's just so cool i'm like vastly living out like any sort of like superhero dream I've ever had, like I'm living out through this game. <laughs> and I think the DLC also adds something to the story. It gives you something additional to do. It kind of focuses on like, okay, what happens to New York City after like the big bads are all put back into the Riker facility or not Riker, the raft. And it gives something more for the players to focus on. It adds like a little bit more of a story and kind of leads into Miles Morales, I would assume, slash what I have been told. It's just exciting. I'm really excited to play Miles Morales at some point. It's probably gonna be a little bit before I do because I wanna wait until we have a date-ish for Spider-Man 2 to come to PC before I dive into Miles Morales. Just because I don't wanna play both Spider-Man games and then be like, well, we're waiting for two more years to get a port. Besides, I have other games I need to play. I still need to play Horizon. I need to go back to God of War. <sighs> There's too many games, not enough time in the day, too many games. And like the one big thing that I really, really liked about this game, I think is how they wrote Peter. Granted, I'm not Peter. I don't know. I don't even know how old Peter is in this game. I'm probably older than him at this point in my life. I'm probably older than him than how he was written in Spider-Man 1 if I had to take a guess. But even then, the, the writers did such a good job with just making him feel very genuine and very relatable. Now, I'm no superhero. I mean, people can call me a superhero if they want. Probably some of my students do when I miraculously make things work and they can register for classes. But I am not a superhero. I can't sling webs. I can't stop bad guys. Even though there's that big difference between myself and Peter, beyond other things, like I don't live in New York City, I'm not a super scientist person, I still feel like I can relate to him. He still feels like the, the awkward dork who lives next door, who's got some really good quips at bad guys. He just feels so relatable and he feels so fun and I feel like if he was just a regular person, like I could have a really good conversation with him, just generally speaking. Like he, he seems like a really nice guy. Specifically the one scene that comes to mind is at the end of the third DLC of Silver Lining, when you're working with Silver Sable to figure out how to stop Hammerhead. And there's that scene where he's with her in like his little underground fortress area. He's like looking for the high five and he just makes some like really good jokes in there. And that's why I kind of stopped. I'm like, you know what? Like, I really feel like I can relate to Peter in a, like in a weird way. Like he just feels so genuine. He feels alive in that aspect. I can, I understand his humor. Like I've definitely laughed at like some of his quips that he's given or like some of the dialogue he's had with either Silver Sable or with MJ or with Miles. I feel like I'm definitely laughing along with him because his humor just really strikes with me. I'm just really, really impressed with how well the writing is for Peter. And maybe, maybe one day we'll do a deep dive. I don't know. I keep saying we're gonna do 15,000 other videos and here I am still unable to get my Dead by Daylight video published. Maybe it'll be published by the time this video comes out. Right, right Trickster? Yeah, Trickster's sleeping probably. <laughs> If you couldn't pick up how I feel about this game throughout this little vlog post, I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4.5 out of five on rank one. It's probably more of a five out of five. The only reason I didn't fully give it that five is because like the soundtrack just wasn't, it didn't hit for me as much as I thought it was going to. And I love video game soundtracks and granted, I still need to go and now listen to the entire soundtrack without the game, and maybe that will change a little bit. But regardless, this game is a masterpiece. I highly recommend it, especially if you wanna like dip your a pinky toe in to the Marvel Cinematic Universe without having to watch like 15 movies and five TV shows to understand what's happening. Like this is a good taste of being able to understand a little bit of the universe without having to fully dive into 
a lot of other media in order to just have fun with it. And like I said earlier, if you're a fan of action adventure open world games, I really think you'll enjoy this one as well, even, even if it's just more for the open world aspect and not so much because it's a superhero game. And I'm really looking forward to what will be coming next after Spider-Man 2, even though technically I don't really know a lot of what happens in Spider-Man 2, but I'm still looking forward to see what Insomniac Studios does next if they haven't been shut down. I hope they're not one of the studios that got, that got shut down. Editing Gray, can you, can you verify that for me, please? Thanks, bestie. I love you. But with all of that, that is my little gaming diary about Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. I'm curious to know, as always, what did you think of the game if you played it for yourself? If you watched someone play it, Again, what did you think of it? I'm very much, again, looking forward to playing Miles Morales at some point in the future, so do keep an eye out on my stream schedule and in the Discord for when that's gonna happen, probably next year, so in probably 2025. But with that, we're gonna be moving on to finishing Mass Effect next. <laughs> <laughs> and then Elden Ring, which I'm just a little bit scared of, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Trickster said it's gonna be fine, so it's gotta be fine. And as always, you're always welcome to come hang out on Twitch, where I do play all of these games live, unless otherwise specified. And with that, again, thank you for my Kofi supporters for helping me out financially. But it's been a pleasure to hang out with you all, and I will hopefully see you all real soon. My name is Aaron Gray, queer by Twitch streamer, signing off.